Chris, are you here? Chris? Chris, is this you? Hey. Are you sleeping here? Dolph, how are you doing? What are you doing here? Um, I was just catching a little bit of shut-eye. <laughs> are you living here? Oh, well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I heard that it might actually be a good idea. In fact, if you have thought about whether you should actually live in a commercial building that you own, there's four questions that you should consider first. One, 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 one shot. Turning dreams into reality. Yeah, it's one all one shot. Now the future is yours. Go. Check it out. You may have heard of house hacking. Have you heard of commercial house hacking? Like. Wait a second here, Chris. You think that I could actually take what I do for work or a business, like an office building, a commercial space, and maybe combine that a little bit with like where I live? Is that legal? Can you do that? Are there certain considerations? And I got news for you, my friend. I am joined by the one and only legendary Dolph Roos. He is the king of commercial, and I did not invite him for a pillow fight, but here we go. Chris, I have had offices in my homes, and I have lived in my offices. <laughs> Let's explore the implications of either one of those. And I gotta tell you right now, when I actually built this space right here, I actually designed a room for myself just because outside of events, I thought it might be kind of fine to have like a kind of a man cave chill space. That never happened. Ended up buying a 40,000 square foot building with your help. And that one, I am putting a little hotel bedroom in, but not so much to maybe save money on rent, uh, more of just like a cool place to chill on those long, hard working nights. And the reason why you might be interested in this and watching today's video is because guess what, news alert, we've got a huge housing shortage. The US is short 5.24 million homes, but there are 5.9 million commercial buildings containing a total of 97 billion square feet. Can you imagine if we used all that square footage to like allow humans to live? Listen, if it were popular, we could solve the housing crisis like that fast. Many business owners are wondering if living in their office space is a viable option. And Dolph, is it? Let's explore it. There are many reasons why it is a great option. Let's get into it. So Chris, to explore this, there are four considerations. The first one is, would it actually be comfortable? Like, could you actually like, move into the place where you're working and have that work. Well, living at work seems cheap and convenient, but depending on the proximity of your living space to the workspace and the hours of employees, you could be sacrificing your privacy, autonomy, and restful sleep. That is very true, especially if the bed or where you put your bed is right next to where one of your coworkers is working. I wouldn't recommend that. But if it's in the same building and in a separate place, it can actually be a great place to live from that perspective. You know, we actually have at the new office space that you helped me negotiate. By the way, saved a couple million dollars on taxes. Thank cool. you very Yay. much. <laughs> but on that particular building, like it has a gym, it has sauna, it has, you know, showers. It's got some lifestyle built into it. I'm like, hey, this kind of has the, type of facilities that if we were that kind of company, it's like, all right, crack the whip. We want you guys working 100 hour weeks and to sleep here. You know, we're not that kind of company, but we actually do have some of those accommodations, which is why I do have a private lock off space where I'm actually putting in my own private living quarters, living room, bedroom. Um, not that I really even plan on using it, but I think from time to time, it might just be a little bit of a fun space. Well, firstly, sometimes there's value and unused opportunity, and you're not a crack the whip company, but if you needed it, it's there. That's a bonus that's good my bonus all right check it out consideration number two is it actually safe moving from a residential home to an office reduces the risk of theft analysis of FBI and the US Department of Justice data finds that 66% of burglaries only affect residential properties so from that perspective, it's actually safer to live in a commercial building than in a residential building. But from my personal experience, having done both, I feel safer in a commercial building than I do in a residential home. You know, when you think of like white collar crime, right? It's like, what are you gonna do? Like, I stole reams of paper, but when someone goes into your private home, that's personal, right? It's like, Ch -ch -ch, where's my shotgun? I wanna protect my family. You definitely have that feeling that there's probably a lot more safety in a commercial building than even a private residence. I think so, perceptually, but also there's better security. The security on the front door of a big commercial building tends to be beefy. It's called commercial grade security for a reason. All right, number three, is it 
actually legal to live in an office building? Well, just because you see a commercial listing that advertises an included living space doesn't mean that space is legal. Before you buy, check with the local planning office to make sure all the permits are in place. In other words, Commercial is like all kinds of business, right? There's like, think of like a gym. Could I actually live at a gym versus like, uh, you know, a white collar space where people have offices? Exactly. What's your experience on this? And development? a lot of that has to do with what's called the zoning. The zoning is what the council designates as permitted uses in that area. And there are many different kinds of zonings. There are mixed uses and C45 and C54, you name it. You've got to check this out because it's a crucial determinant as to whether this is something you can use. So Dolph, have you actually ever encountered this on one of your commercial deals that you've done all over the world? Oh, absolutely. Let me talk about it from both perspectives. So I had a house. It was a residential house, zoned residential. All you could do is lease it out as a long-term residential proposition. However, I heard from council meetings that they were changing the zoning to light commercial. You couldn't put a factory in there, but you could turn it into, say, a law firm or a dental practice or something like that. So when I bought that house and converted it to commercial, the value went up extraordinarily high. And you can do a similar analogous thing with a commercial building. If you've got a commercial building, there's not that much demand for it, but we know that you and I could put a residential unit in there, then suddenly the value can go up. So keep an eye out for a zone change or see if you can engineer a zone change. Go to the council and suggest it. I gotta tell you guys, one of the things that I love specifically about Dolph, and one of the reasons why he is my mentor on everything I do in commercial, is because his specialty is looking at a project and then applying a little bit of creativity that will increase the value. Because if you buy a residential property like I buy every single day, a creative idea, for the most part, can't really change the value. I can't really rent it for double or triple or quadruple if I add an extra car garage or if I add a washer and dryer or if I build a deck on the back. I can't you know, charge $500 more a month on rent. But on commercial, a zoning change is something that could actually increase that value of that property. That is so true. And we've done that over and over again. And what we're talking about today is how having a residential component can increase the value of the building. And depending on the business, it could be worth the while of the business owner to be able to either live on site or have a manager live on site. A prime example is a storage facility. Storage facilities need a manager. And with an on-site manager, you can get more rental per month because they can let people in. So you need the zoning permit to have someone live on that commercial premise. And number four, let's talk about the potential pitfalls. Like, are there other things that could go bump in the night if you choose to kind of mix and mingle some residential with some commercial? Well, there are. For instance, if your apartment becomes illegal in a commercial property, you could be fined and either be required to remove the unit or legalize it by getting the correct permits. The commensurate advantage of that, of course, is that if you do get it legalized and if you do get a zone change to allow it to happen in the first place, you can increase the value of the building tremendously. That's why I love looking at all opportunities of changing the use of a commercial building, including putting some residential in there. So the bottom line is yes, you can combine residential use with commercial use in certain circumstances, and today's video should make it clear on how you can win that game. Now, there are a lot of commercial buildings that are out there waiting to be leveraged, bought up, and used, but there's also a lot of real estate that is super hot in the market right now that people are trying to get into. And I'm gonna tell you right now, there's a lot of money that you can make in commercial, and there's a link below where I want you to follow Dolph DeRoos and let him take you on a journey of learning how to make money in commercial real estate. On the other hand, if you're interested in saying, you know, I think I just want to do it the old fashioned way with some old fashioned real estate rentals and make millions of dollars that way. I'm going to tell you, you can do it both ways, but there's also a link below for getting a free copy of my book, The Straight Path to Real Estate Well, This is a millionaire maker. This book has been used over the last two decades to help people figure out how to go from a house hack on a single house to five houses to hundreds of houses. And so if you're looking for building your wealth in real estate, click the links below. Either follow Dolph Roos and learn how to do it in commercial, or learn how to do it with residential with this free book. Once again, Chris, we're limited only by our imaginations. Whatever we create in our minds, we can manifest it in our real estate world. I love that. And I'm gonna tell you right now, Dolph will show you how to make millions of dollars in the game of commercial. What I love about commercial is you are one deal away from a lifetime's worth of income. On the other hand, if you're looking for an ultimate guide to get started on residential real estate, how I got started, the internet thinks you're really gonna like this video. Check it out. Or we could have, where you're in one spot and I'm in, and we just have a video of you and then. Oh, yeah, so, 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 Dal, 
What'd you learn today? <laughs> what was your favorite part of today? <laughs> Dolph, was it a good day? Oh, it was a great day. I loved it. <laughs>